I'm gonna be honest, with a lot of my recent reviews and videos, I've tried my best to not structure these as me going from track one to two to three to four, etc., etc. I imagine myself jumping around a little bit, not so much talking about the tracks in order, just talking about them to further prove a point. But it turns out with this review, I kind of accidentally did that. Sorry about that. Either way though, welcome back to 10 Years Later, a series that I like to do to go back and revisit albums from the 2010s that either were personally impactful to me, impactful to music in general, or just worth revisiting 10 years later, be it for good or bad reasons. I know I haven't done a video in this series in a while, but it turns out the first few months of 2010 were pretty slow, so there weren't a whole lot of albums that I really wanted to revisit. But then I revisited this. I wanted to see if I could find some problem childs given the negative reception DJ Khaled has received for his art recently, and spoiler alert, I found some. Anyway, as I just said, the album we will be talking about today is DJ Khaled's 2010 album Victory. DJ Khaled is if you don't know already, is a human being in the music industry. And that's all she wrote. What does he do? I'm sorry, does he actually produce his own music? I am very confused. I don't know what he does. It says he's a producer, but some of the things I found with this album would seem to contradict that. What it actually seems though is that Khaled is more of a music curator. He is a man with a lot of money who can bring in a lot of other artists with a lot of money and make music that could get them a lot of money. Hurrah, capitalism gets to live another day. In all honesty, the way I look at DJ Khaled these days, it seems that he's more of a social media personality and radio and TV show personality than he is a musician. Because even though he's dropped music pretty consistently, I would honestly say it's mostly just bog standard radio friendly stuff that just kind of feels like junk food music. Not to say it's bad, but it's not like anything you're going to want to consistently return to. These days, we know that he does that with a lot of poppy sounds. He brings out a lot of chart topping artists to make pop friendly hits. With this record, it seemed less like he was trying to make pop hits and more like he was just firmly grasping the hip hop roots. Personally, I wondered going into this record if it would display a more hungry side of Khaled in some way. Like I know it was his fourth album, but a part of me wondered if the complacency that I've heard people complain about with him was a recent thing or if it's something that I could trace back to this record. And unfortunately, it turns out that I can trace that complacency back to this record. So I'm I'm not totally sure how to review this. As I said earlier, I'm still not entirely sure what DJ Khaled does other than scream his name on a song, so I guess he does a mop-up job of letting us know he has a name, even if the constant screaming of it does get pretty annoying. But really, that's it. I already know he doesn't really rap or sing all that much, if at all. He doesn't have any writing credits on the record, not that any of this music has much substance to speak of, and all of his producer credits on the record are apparently actually actually co-producer credits. So again, I'm just not sure what he did with this album and how he is as big as he is. Apparently it was Snapchat. So take notes, kids, just post a lot on Snapchat and then maybe one day you'll become as famous as DJ Khaled. But onto the music itself, in regards to the production, there's really not all that much for me to say about it. Most of what's here is pretty bog standard hip hop beats that kind of feel dated even by 2010 standards. I couldn't find one instrumental on this album that really stood out. Every single one was a regurgitation of sounds that I felt like I had been hearing all the way back in 2008. And I wasn't even listening to hip hop in 2008, so make of that what you will. It might not sound as pop friendly as a lot of DJ Khaled's stuff today, but it seems like there's not much he or any of the other producers that work on this album do to make something potent. Ask Khaled and his crew to make you the safest chart friendly beat that he can, and he's got you covered. But ask him to make something with some punch, and he'd probably turn and walk away. Really, when it comes to a record like this, it's more about the singers, rappers, and performers that Khaled brings on, as opposed to DJ Khaled himself. By the way, DJ Khaled's real name is Khaled Khaled. Yes, his first and last name are the exact same. Excellent. Okay, jokes aside though, I don't even know if I can talk about all the performances on this album, because there are like 30 different artists here. I'll do what I can, but don't be surprised if I miss a few. Hell, to be honest with you, I didn't even realize that Diddy and Busta Rhymes were on the intro track, because Khaled actually tried to rap in 
some way. He spits a verse where he tries to sound inspirational in a way that just feels cheesy and kind of laughable. Does he do that on his other records? Because I hope not. And I know that All I Do Is Win is like Khaled's iconic song. It's probably the track he's put out that's had the most longevity to it. But honestly, I've heard this song on way too many generic sports montages that it did kind of drive me up a wall at one point. I do like the guest verses from Ludacris, Rick Ross, and Snoop Dogg, but honestly, while I love T-Pain, his chorus on this track never fails to make me scramble for the mute button. And then the track Put Your Hands Up has a chorus from Shife, one that feels so incoherent thanks to all the ad libs thrown over it. And even despite the song having Young Jeezy, Plies, and Rick Ross, none of their verses really stood out in any way. Everyone just kind of sounds like they're here to collect the check. Fed Up is a perfect song title because even after four tracks, I started feeling fed up with this album. And maybe it's the overly busy instrumental on the song, but somehow this track actually has a bad Usher hook. Like, he sounds good, but wow, the production just overpowers the hell out of him, and the auto-tune on his voice is just overkill. Sure, there are some dope flows from Young Jeezy and Rick Ross. By the way, Khaled really knows how to reuse artists, doesn't he? And Drake and Lil Wayne run away with the song near the end, but it's just not like there's anything that's really special about it other than those short moments where a few of the features come in. In all honesty, I think the only real highlight of this album that I think is worth listening to is the track Victory. Even though the piano 808 beat combo is kind of standard, John Legend's chorus is soulful and sounds perfect up against the instrumentals, and Nas's twisty flows and wordplay are, as you would expect, pretty fantastic. But after that pretty emotional track, everything just kind of starts going back to what we'd been hearing before. Really, if you've heard one song on this album, you've heard them all. From the generic Shife and Jim Jones collab all to the Birdman Bun B Soldier Boy track Rockin' All My Chains On, you'll find all the generic sounds you want on this record. I know I've also talked a lot about how the hooks on this record are really bad, but wow, Butu Banton's hook on Killing Me is just so committed to lowering the bar. Bounty Hunter also doesn't really do anything special, and not even Busta Rhymes can save the song, even if his flows are kind of cool. Also, Rum appears and tries to tell me that he's bringing real rap back, but apparently he's not bringing good hooks back. And honestly, even if this is real rap, there's nothing he really says out here that's interesting to me other than that he's tired of ringtone rappers. And maybe that second verse where he talks about the industry. Bring the Money Out has a few cool flows from Shif, Nelly, Boozy Badass, and Ace Hood, but wow, this instrumental is just so over the top and overly glossy to the point where it feels like all four of the artists on it are fighting with the beat to make sure that it doesn't drown them out. On My Way is a posse cut featuring nine different artists, but not a single one of them stands out, and this track just feels like a bad relic of the late 2000s that very well could have been churned out by a number of artists who bordered the line between R&B and hip-hop. There is no justifiable reason for this song to be nearly six minutes. It just feels like a complete wasteland. I also don't know what I expected out of the closer Rep My City, but even with a few neat flows, Pitbull is complete cheese on here. Special low light being the lines, not knowing I had a plan for every letter in the alpha bitch. My life's been diarrhea, boy, I've been through some shit. It's a shame because Jarvis's hook is actually one of the few choruses on this album that I actually like, but Pitbull? No, no. Overall, I went into this thing wondering if I would find some kind of problem child, and I found it. I understand Khaled now after listening to this record. He just doesn't care. He has a lot of money, and at this point, he doesn't need to worry about how good or bad his music is. He has enough money and connections to big stars that he can just bring them onto this album, have them spit a quick 16 or drop a chart-friendly chorus, collect the check and call it a day. The album to me just feels like a pot boiler, an excuse for artists and Khaled himself to collect a check in what feels like a barren creative wasteland. And it doesn't really matter if the artists sound half as good as they usually do, the songs are safe enough to pop up on the charts and pull in all the money, and therefore make their bank accounts bigger. As I said earlier, hooray for capitalism. The only difference between the Khaled of then and the Khaled of now to me is that the Khaled of then focused on regurgitating hip-hop and really only hip-hop, where today's Khaled has worked as magic and jumped onto the pop train as well. He's taken his homogenized sounds and styles and just started to apply them to the pop realm, just as he did with the hip-hop realm 10 years ago. What an industry. Yeah, this thing is not good, and it hasn't gotten any better with time. Sometimes an artist starts to struggle and puts out weak projects, but it helps you appreciate their old ones a little bit. But this? Nah, it hasn't gotten any better a decade later. Again, the only favorite track for me on this record was Victory, and my least favorite 
favorites would be intro, put your hands up, ball, rocking all my chains on, killing me, bringing real rap back, bring the money out, and on my way. Back in 2010, my 12 year old self was ever so slightly getting into hip hop thanks to the likes of Eminem and Drake. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if my younger self actually liked a few songs off this album back then, but today, no. If I did have to give this a rating, you guys know I would give it an awful. Just don't waste your time with it. Unless you're like me and really wanted to find the root of the DJ Khaled problem, just ignore this thing. I don't deny that DJ Khaled has made a fun single every once in a while, but just after listening to this, it doesn't seem like he's an albums artist at all. But that's just my opinion on this album. What did you guys think about it? Did you enjoy it back in 2010? Do you still enjoy it now? Did you hate it back in 2010? Do you still hate it now? Or are you just indifferent to DJ Khaled in general? What was your first experience with the album? What do you think of it now? Let's just talk about this album and your history with it. Leave all your thoughts on it down in the comments. Let's keep this civil and have some fun as we like to do. If you guys want to hit like and subscribe, thank you. If not, it's no big deal. I totally understand. For what's next in this series, there are quite a few albums coming out in March, like new albums that I'm going to be reviewing, but I'm still going to try to intersperse these videos in there as long as time doesn't get in the way because of school. Looking at some of the March albums, I think some of the ones that I would be willing to tackle would be Ludacris's Battle of the Sexes, Justin Bieber's My World 2.0, and then probably Usher's Raymond vs. Raymond. Hopefully I can get to them all. I can only hope. But either way, stay tuned for new videos in this segment. Thank you guys for watching this one. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.